Okay, so as I mentioned you that uh, we are going to discuss about various RF power sources and I will be taking this as a question. So the question which comes in your exam, uh, quite a common question is list various RF power sources in radar transmitters. So there are number of power sources in radar transmitter. First of all, what is power source? Power source is a device is a kind of a tube or amplifier or a system which generates the radio frequency signals, RF signals. Uh, mainly they uh, firstly generate electron beam and then they uh, deflect the beam in magnetic field, magnetic area. So they generate uh, the uh, RF signal, radio frequency, high frequency electron beam signal. Okay. So the number of devices which are used to generate RF power are uh, Pilistron, Magnetron, TWD called the traveling wave tube, then hybrid Pilistron, solid state transistor amplifier, Magnetron and so on. There are a number of devices used to generate uh, RF power in radar transmitters. Okay, is this clear to everyone? What is the meaning of RF power uh, devices, RF power sources? They are like, uh, have you studied CRT? Have you studied CRT? Have you heard about CRT? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, if you have studied it, you, if you have uh, yes, visualized it in your uh, books, you must have seen that there is a kind of tube. Uh, there is a glass tube within which the electron beam is not only generated but it is made to travel from cathode to the screen right so there is a gun there is a, a pair of deflection plates and then there is a coating uh, destination screen to which when the electron beam strikes a pattern is obtained produced right so somewhat like that uh, in various uh, RF power sources used in radar transmitters, a uh, kind of tube is there, almost in all devices, the kind of tube is there where the electron beam is generated first and then it is tra traveled. Fine. And this beam is of very high frequency, it is of radio frequency, and that is why they are called as RF power sources. The very first source about which you must have studied in your microwave subject is Calistron tube. So Calistron tube is an excellent radar tube. It is the most widely and popularly used tube. And because of the fact that it offers high gain, high efficiency, and is capable of higher average and peak power. So that it has high average power, high peak power, high gain, high efficiency and this is in comparison to other RF power sources. How can you say that it generates high values of these things? It is because if we compare these parameters to the other RF power sources, so this is the best parameter. Is this clear to everyone? Now the second uh, tube or second RF power source is, second RF power source is traveling wave tube. Huh? TWT device. Okay, so uh, this is not as good as Calistron. It is comparatively uh, poor in performance. It gives slightly less power, slightly less gain, and slightly less efficiency than Calistron. But it has a advantage that it, is, it offers relatively high bandwidth. Okay, so if you say then. If there are so many drawbacks of TWD when we compare it with cholesterol, like it gives slightly less power, less gain, less efficiency, then what, what's the point of using TWD and where do we use TWD? So basically we use TWD for average power levels to generate moderate power signals 
for relatively wide band range. Okay. After this, the third device is hybrid cholesterol. This is called hybrid cholesterol because in comparison to cholesterol, it has got multiple resident cavities. Instead of one cavity, there are a number of uh, cavities which are similar to used in TWT. TWT ki performance bhi hai isme of cholesterol. Okay, class, this year to everyone. So you have to remember the names of the RF power sources and you have to just remember few features of them so that you can give a kind of comparison. You can also write these comparisons in the form of a table where you can make a number of columns and in each column you can write the differences but in that case you should know the same parameters for all the devices. So if you know the same parameters like efficiency, gain, bandwidth, right? So on the basis of parameters, you can compare these devices. Or otherwise, simply you can write down the name of the particular device and you can write a little bit about it, uh, some advantages, disadvantage, and application. Okay? So after this, the next device is solid state transistor amplifier. Now, why is it called solid state transistor amplifier? Do you know what is solid state device? Will anybody tell me what are solid state devices? What is the difference between tube devices and solid state devices? Can anybody tell me? Yes. The difference between the tube devices and solid state devices is that the tube devices are made up of glass tubes like uh, CRT, vacuum tubes, triode walls, diode walls, these all are tube devices where the electron beam is generated and moved from cathode to anode. Uh, there is an electron gun, there is a beam which is generated inside that tube and it travels, it oscillates uh, due to the presence of the deflection plates. So these are called as the tube devices. Whereas in case of solid state devices, these are made up of semiconductor materials. Like your simple diodes, transistors, MOSFETs, and so on. So the semiconductor devices are also used to generate electron beam or electrons. They also move from cathode to anode. They also give rise to conduction. They also give current but they are much higher in terms of performance. They could offer good efficiency, good performance, right? And also since they are made up of semiconductors, so their durability is also high. They are quite rugged, they are quite strong, they are not fragile like glass tubes. And also the size of these devices is very small. They can be made available in nanotechnology also. Whereas the tube devices are relatively bigger in size. As well. Right? So I hope you got to know you, the difference between the tube devices and solid state devices. So if it is a solid state transistor amplifier, so simply it is made up of semiconductor device and it also offers a lot of advantages when we compare it with tube devices like a strong tube, TWT, etc. Okay, so these are capable of wider bandwidth than most other power sources. They operate with low voltages, ease of maintenance, and have a promise of long life. As I told you, they, uh, they, since they are made up of semiconductors, so they have long life. It is easy to maintain them. And the required operating voltages are also low. Along with that, they offer the very wide bandwidth. They are capable to operate for a wider bandwidth. Fine. Am I clear? Is anybody listening to me or not? Since it is quite a theoretical concept, I am trying to give you an explanation of each and every word. And rest, you have to listen to me carefully. You have to be a little focused or otherwise it's up to you how you deal with the subject, okay? So the next thing is magnetron. Now the magnetron is also a kind of 
RF power source and for the data transmitter, but they are relatively small in size. When you compare uh, the difference between the calistron and magnetron, the magnetrons are relatively smaller in size and they are operated for lower voltages. It's relatively lower voltages for the to be used magnetron. But the problem is that its average power is limited. So it has poor noise and stability characteristics. So if you compare cholesterol and magnetron, the size and the power and the voltage requirements are relatively low in case of magnetron. But the noise problem and the stability problem is there in magnetron. So it limits its ability to cancel clutter. Clutter we have discussed a number of times in this class that clutter are the echoes which are unwanted echoes. So it is required to most of the time cancel the clutter effect. So they are not able to cancel the clutter. Okay? Is this clear to everyone? Okay.